Hello everyone, my name is Vivi Zhang. Today, I'm pleased to present the VSNTIO, a system solution to improve I.O. performance and efficiency on SMT processors in cloud. This work is a collaborative research effort between NGIT, Hofstra, and HKU. In clouds, SMT is widely enabled. Most types of virtual machines in public cloud run processors with SMT enabled. And these VMs can have their vCPUs run on dedicated hardware threads or timeshare hardware threads. Enabling SMT in the cloud is to improve system throughput. The reason is that multiple hardware threads share hardware resources on each core. Thus, hardware resource utilization is increased. Due to resource sharing between hardware threads, CPU schedulers are crucial for achieving high throughput on HMT processors. To achieve high throughput, CPU scheduler must be optimized into aspects. The first aspect is to maximize CPU utilization. The second aspect is to minimize overhead. Intensive study has concentrated on symbolic scheduling. It focuses on maximizing utilization for computation-intensive workloads. Its basic idea is to co-schedule threads that can fully utilize the hardware resources with minimal conflicts on each core. However, how to minimize overhead is under study. This problem is very important for I.O. workloads. This is because I.O. workloads incur high scheduling overhead due to frequent I.O. operations. The overhead reduces system throughput when there are computation workloads on the same core. Our paper targets this problem. Particularly, our paper studies how to eff effectively, efficiently schedule I.O. workloads and on SMT processors in virtualized cloud. There are several reasons why we target this problem in virtualized cloud. The first reason is that IO workloads are usually mixed with computation workloads in cloud. For example, they are usually packed in different VMs and consolidated on the same server to maximize system utilization. Even in the same application, like database server, some threads like query processing are computation intensive and some other threads like managing bank end storage are IO intensive. For mixed workloads in clouds, the scheduling of IO workloads may affect performance of both IO and computation workloads. High IO throughput is not enough. High IO efficiency is equally important to avoid degrading throughput of computation workloads. The second reason is that Existing techniques for improving I.O. performance are inefficient on SMT processors. To improve I.O. performance, CPU scheduler increases the responsiveness of I.O. workload to I.O. events. In order to respond to I.O. events quickly to keep I.O. device busy, existing CPU schedulers for increasing I.O. responsiveness generally use two techniques, pooling and priority boosting. For pooling, I.O. workloads enter busy loops and wait for I.O. events. For priority boosting, I.O. workloads are prioritized to preempt running workloads. However, on SMT processors, busy looping in pooling and the content switches incurred by priority boosting can greatly reduce resources available to other hardware threads. These techniques incur higher overhead in virtualized clouds. This is because virtualization incurs Astro operations as shown in blue color. In virtualized systems based on our experiments, putting on one hardware thread may slow down the computation on other hardware thread by about 30%. The hand slowdown is caused by two factors. One is VM exits, which are incurred because putting is implemented at the host level. The other is repeated instructions controlling the busy loops. VCPU switches incurred by priority boosting on one hardware thread may slow down the computation on the other hardware thread by about 70%. They cause large slowdowns, meaning because I want data cache need to be flushed during vCPU switches in order to address the security problems caused by virtualization. Other costly operations, including handling rescheduling IPIs and the execution of scheduling algorithm also contribute to the performance impact incurred by vCPU switches. To efficiently schedule I.O. workloads in SMT-enabled clouds, we design vSMT-I.O. Next, I'm going to present the basic ideas and the key issues 
and the solutions to address these issues. Our basic idea is to make IO workload dominant on hardware threads. It is motivated by the hardware-based design for efficient blocking synchronization on SMT processors. Based on the idea, we design efficient blocking mechanism for VCPUs named contact retention as a key technique. With contact retention, when a VCPU is waiting for an IO event, it can block itself on a hardware thread and release all its resources for other hardware thread. Thus, no busy looping is involved. Upon the IO event, the VCPU can resume execution quickly without contact switches involved. Contact retention is implemented with monitor and weight support on Intel processors. Although the rationale of contact retention mechanism is straightforward, maximizing its potential on improving IO throughput and efficiency needs to address several technical issues. First, uncontrolled contact retention can diminish the benefits from SMT. This is because contact retention reduces the number of active hardware threads on a core and thus may delay the execution of computation workloads or other IO workloads on the core. This issue is particularly serious for x86 processors, which only implement two-way SMT. If not controlled, contact retention may be long time periods because many IO operations have very long latencies, such as HDD accesses, creating and scheduling delay. This diminishes more benefits from SMT. Our solution is to enforce an adjustable timeout on contact retentions. The timeout interrupts contact retentions be before they become overlap. The timeout value cannot be too low or too high. Otherwise, both IO performance and computation performance will be reduced. If the value is too low, contact retention is ineffective and leads to low IO performance. The low value also incurs high overhead from contact switches that cause low computation performance. As we have explained earlier, if the value is too high, high delay will be caused to other IO workloads on the core. The timeout value is dynamic adjusted and its algorithm is shown on the next slide. As shown in the algorithm, the timeout value is initiated with a relative low value. Then the timeout value is gradually adjusted. Specifically, the algorithm slightly increases or decreases the value and checks the corresponding performance. If both IO performance and computation performance are improved with the new value, the timeout value will be set to this new value. Second, existing symbiotic scheduling techniques cannot handle mixed workloads for hand processor throughput. To maximize throughput, CPU schedulers must co-schedule workloads with complementary resource in mind. Existing symbiotic scheduling techniques cannot be used to maximize throughput for mixed workloads. This is because it targets steady computation workloads and the precisely characterized resource demand. However, the resource demand of IO workloads changed dramatically due to contact retentions and burstiness of IO operations. Our solution targets dynamic and mixed workloads and costly characterized resource demand based on the time spent in contact retention. It ranks and characterizes VCPUs based on the amount of time they spend on contact retention. In the first category, VCPUs have less contact retention time. They are resource hungry. In the second category, VCPUs have more contact retention time. They consume little resource. Thus, VCPUs from different categories have complementary resource demand. They are co-scheduled on different hardware threads on each core. The third issue is that contact retention may reduce the throughput of IO workloads since it reduces the time available to other computation. The solution is in two aspects. First, timeouts explained earlier have reduced the time slice consumed by long contact retentions. Second, for the relative short contact retentions, time slice of IO workloads is compensated by increasing their weights and priorities. The last issue is that the effectiveness of VSMTIO reduces when the workloads become homogeneous on each core. Our observation is that workloads on different cores may still be heterogeneous. Heterogeneous. For example, 
computation workloads are on one core and our workloads are on another core. Based on our observation, our solution is to migrate workloads across different cores to increase the workload heterogeneity on each core. We have implemented a prototype of VSMPL based on Linux and KVM. VSMPL incorporates four major components, which are shown in orange in this figure. On each core, the workload monitor component periodically monitors workloads running on vCPUs and provides workload information, such as the content retention rates to other components. At the beginning of each time period, the re retention of where symbiotic scheduling component co-schedules vCPUs in different categories I explained earlier onto different hardware threads on each core. This component is implemented in the host level based on Linux completely fair scheduler. Then, the long-term content retention component enforces and just timeouts. In this component, the content retention mechanism is implemented in the host OS, in the guest OS to minimize overhead. We change unused bits in the VM execution control register to share data between guest OS and host OS. For example, these bits are used to notify timeout of content retention in the guest OS. At last, the workload adjuster component maintains workload heterogeneity to further improve effectiveness of VSMTL on each core. Specifically, this component is implemented based on Linux CFS and idle thread in the host OS. We test our prototype implementation with real-world applications. Our evaluation shows VSMTL can increase both I.O. workload throughput and the computation workload throughput. We conduct our evaluation with Linux and KVM on a Dell PowerX server. We test the VSMTL under two settings. The first setting is that each vCPU has a dedicated hardware thread. The second setting is that each hardware thread is time shared by multiple vCPUs. We compare this SMPL with priority boosting, polling, and the polling with a dynamic adjusted timeout. We evaluate the VSMPL on diverse real world applications, including DBMS, web servers, AI workload, and Hadoop jobs. The objectives of our evaluation are full food. I will explain the first one to show VSMPL can improve I.O. performance with high efficiency and benefit both I.O. workload and computation workloads. You can read our paper to learn more about the remaining evaluation objectives. This figure shows the normalized throughput of eight benchmark pairs when each vCPU has a dedicated hardware thread. On X, we show different benchmark pairs. On Y, we show the normalized throughputs. Under this dedicated stacking, pooling can achieve the best IO workload throughput. Overall, VSMTL and pooling achieve similar IO workload throughput. On average, with VSMTL, IO workload throughput is 46% higher than party boosting and 28% higher than pooling with timeout. This shows VSMTL can effectively improve IO throughput compared with party boosting and pooling with timeout. On average, with VSMTL, throughput of matrix multiplication is 38%, 15%, and 28% higher than it with pooling, party boosting, and pooling with timeout, respectively. This shows VSMTL can improve IO efficiency. We confirm that VSMTL can also improve IO throughput and IO efficiency. When each hardware thread is time shared by multiple vCPUs. To understand why VSMDL can improve IO performance and IO efficiency, we choose to analyze the DBT1 and the multiple classification benchmark pair. We choose this pair because VSMDL can improve DBT1's IO performance by the largest percentage over putting with a timeout. For IO performance, we find the effectiveness of VSMDL on improving IO performance is reflected by reduced vCPU switches. Compared with priority boosting, VSMDL can reduce vCPU switches by 93%. As a comparison, pooling with timeout can only reduce vCPU switches by 
This explains why VSMTL can effectively improve IO workload throughput compared with party boosting and pulling with timeout. For IO efficiency, we find that the high efficiency of VSMTL comes partially from its capability to reduce vCPU switches. It also comes from VSMTL controlling the time spent on contact retention. With contact retention less well controlled, more CPU time can be used by multiple classification to improve processor throughput. This figure shows the normalized response times of seven benchmarks when each hardware thread time shared by two vCPUs. On X, we show different benchmarks. On Y, we show normalized re response times. On average, relatively to priority boosting, VSMTL can reduce response times by 51%, and pooling with timeout can reduce response times by 29%. This shows VSMTL can greatly improve IO responsiveness and IO performance compared with priority boosting and the pooling with timeout. To understand how VSMTL reduces response times, let's analyze the time spent by vCPUs in different states during the execution of dbt1. We choose dbt1 because vSMTL can reduce dbt1's response time by the largest percentage over priority boosting. We find that response times are reduced with vSMTL, meaning because vCPUs spend less time on waiting to be scheduled or for events. VSMTL can significantly reduce the time in the ready state. This is because contact retention reduces with contact switches between vCPUs and thus reduces the scheduling delay associated with the switches. We also notice that the time in the waiting state is also substantially reduced for dbt one This is because finishing an IO operation sometimes needs to needs a collaboration of multiple vCPUs in the VM. For example, after a vCPU sends out an IO request and becomes idle, another vCPU may receive the response and must notify the formal vCPU by sending it an interprocessor interrupt. In this case, reducing the ready time of the latter vCPU can also reduce the waiting time of the formal vCPU. Now, we conclude. This work focuses on an understudied yet fundamental issue on SMT processors. How to schedule IO workloads to improve their IO performance and efficiency. Existing techniques used by CPU schedulers are inefficient. Such inefficiency makes it hard to achieve high CPU throughput and IO throughput on processor, on SMT processors. VSMTML is an efficient solution for scheduling IO workloads on x86 virtualized clouds. The key technique in VSMTML is contact retention. Contact retention uses a hardware thread to hold the context of an IO workload waiting for IO events. In this way, overhead of contact switches and spinning can be eliminated. VSMTL also addresses two key issues. In implementing the contact retention in real systems. The first issue is that uncontrolled contact retention can diminish the benefits from SMT processors. The second issue is that existing symbiotic scheduling techniques can now handle mixed workloads for hand processor throughput due to contact retention. Extensive evaluation shows that VSMTL can substantially increase both CPU throughput and the IO throughput. Thank you for your listening. I'm pleased to take questions.